Exactly. I mean, who's the best to say it? Mike Tyson. You right. don't got a plan until you get hit. That's right. You know, and that's what that's the mentality. He, he, I, he, I'm not going to say the word hero. He's not like my hero, yeah. but he's someone I look up to in the fight game. And his mentality going in there is like he said, you, everyone's got a plan until they get hit. Mm. And that and that's kind of my game plan going in there. I'm going to come. I'm going to attack early. You know, I'm looking to put them out as fast as you can. Yep. You know, just like if someone broke into my house and they're trying to attack me, I'm not going to move around, move around. I'm going to go straight point. at him. I'm going to go straight at him. I'm going to try to kill him instantly. Yeah. You know, and that, that that's my fighting style. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go in there. I know these people are more trained than someone coming in and attack you at the house. But sure. let's see if you can survive this. This is the prize fighting business. I'm your host, Daniel Casado, and today my interview guest is professional prize fighter and mixed martial artist in the Bellator lightweight division, rising contender Brandon Gertz. Brandon's currently preparing for his upcoming fight at Bellator 239, where he'll be the co-main event in Thackerville, Oklahoma, when he takes on UFC veteran Miles Jury. Brandon sat down with me ahead of that to have a conversation about his mixed martial arts journey up to this point including being an All-American wrestler in college, his time spent with the past Grudge Training Center with the likes of Trevor Whitman, Pat Barry, and Justin Gagey, and how that's translated into his now very aggressive fighting style. So let's dive into my conversation with Brandon Gertz. All right, Brandon, well, thank you very much for joining me. Absolutely, brother. Thanks for having me. Of course, a pleasure. And uh, it's before a big fight for you. I mean, you've got uh, Bellator coming up in Thackerville, Oklahoma, February 21st, and it's against a UFC veteran, Miles Jury. So uh, a big mm-hmm. a big fight for your career. What, uh, what do you think about it? Um, yeah, it's a big fight. It's a guy, you know, like you said, been in the UFC. He had a he had a hot run in the UFC, you know, and um, he, he was a good name. So I li- it, was a, it was a fight I asked for, you know, they gave oh, it Oh, really? To me. Cool. Yeah, I just thought the matchup, and I want the big names. You know, yeah. I'm always been someone I ask for for the big names, and that's you know that's what they give me. You so know? you saw him get signed by Bellator, and you're, they were asking you, what do you want for your next fight? And we're like, hey, that guy. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And cool. like I said, he's got a big name. I want to fight the bigger names in the sport. That's that's who I want to fight. You yeah. know, so I like it stylistically. I think I'm not a good a, a good style for him. <laughs> you I know? agree. Uh, I look at it like he's out there trying to score points, you mm-hmm. know, and I'm out there trying to take his head off. Yep. And uh, I don't think when he gets pressure put on him, that's kind of when he crumbles. Mm-hmm. He He's a great guy. He's a great martial artist, and he can point it. He can do all that. But when someone comes forward, which I, I like to do, or that's what I do, that's all I know how to do, yep. uh, he kind of, he that's that's out of his that's out of his wheelhouse. Yeah. You know, he likes, he's a rhythm fighter. He likes it to be going his way, you know. And I'm someone that comes in there, and I, I ain't about the rhythm, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. a, I'm about coming in there, and I'm about putting somebody away. Taking their know? head off, absolutely. Taking their head off, you know. And I've learned a long time ago, and I'm not, you know, not even saying, but when I came here to train is when I feel like I really over, I hit that over hump. And, mm. and it was my training partner, Justin Gaethje, that really – was able to like instill that in, in life, like especially as an athlete, like some people can get through to you, some people can't. Yeah. So like other people have different type of coaches because some people, you know, I don't I don't like to eat yelled at, I don't like that, like that that doesn't put me, but he was able to kind of get through to me that you go out there, you give it hell, you know? Yeah. Like, and then whatever, whatever comes out of it at the end, that's it, doesn't matter, you know? But as right. long as you go out there and you give it hell, I, and what I does agree. It matter after, and you I'd know? say you guys have very similar styles, and that both end up being problems for people with styles like Miles Jury. You know, where they're trying to fight from the outside, whereas you and Justin, but I mean particularly you, you're cutting off the cage, you're you're throwing power, you're stepping into them instead of you know kind of dancing around with footwork. I mean, you're coming to fight right away. It's a banging style, mm-hmm. and you just fought uh, Sadawad and won a unanimous decision, almost put him out three times, you know, just by moving forward on him and I don't, laid a bomb. I mean, I like that fight because it, it showed, I mean, like, I went out there to kill 
other guy, and he, yeah. and I feel like he was dead multiple times. I, it looked like and it. He, and he came back <laughs> to life. And I was in there when he dropped, and I saw his eyes go back. I was like, yeah. all right, he's dead. Here his we go. Legs and then everything. he came back, and I was like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> like this this guy's a Terminator. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, but it, it was one of those ones. I'm not gonna joke. I was a little depressed after it because that was one I really wanted to put someone. I go in there and I want to put someone away every time. I mean, you did everything but put him away. I mean, it looked like he was done three times. Yeah, and that and I had to eventually was able to look back at it and be happy that I was able to have that fight and keep my composure with yep. someone coming back. That's you very know, true. like and that's a tough dude. And he didn't just come back and stay alive. He came back and started he was throwing he was yeah. throwing bombs at me. Yeah. You know, and throwing I'm throwing knees. Throwing everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he's a tough guy. Yeah. So you get to look back at that fight and be like, I gave him my all and I was able to survive the comeback of him, you right. know? Um, and some people would wilter at that. I've seen it happen before. Someone's beating the crap out of somebody and they don't die. And then the other, and then now he's tired and gassed out and the other guy beats him yeah. because that, he, he gave happen. it his all, yep. you know, and when you're throwing power and you're throwing shit, it, it's tiring, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I get a little, t- I'm not going to ever say it. I, I get a little tired than some people, you and know, fit, like, dude, and, and the more muscle mass you got, the tired you get, yeah. you know, yeah. and I'll, I'll get tired after throwing bombs like that. It's not like a thing. And when you're moving and stuff like that, that's different, you right. know. But when I'm throwing power and shit and they don't die, like, it, it, it's a little, uh, you get a little tired. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by 5280 Wealth Management and their financial coaching program. For just $249 a month, you can add your own financial coach and advisor to your team. A financial coach at 5280 Wealth Management can help you analyze your cash flow, create a budget, a savings plan, and invest your money to reach your wealth building goals. 5280 Wealth Management assists you in aligning your values with your goals and then building a plan to achieve them. So take control of your finances and your future with 5280 Wealth Management. Visit 5280wealthmanagement.com slash financial coaching to learn more and use code TPFB at checkout for 10% off your first month's service. <laughs> but that is that is your style, though. I mean, that wrestling uh, pressure where maybe you're not taking them down, but you're you're staying nose to nose with them, so they're constantly worried about the takedown. But then also defending these bombs that you're throwing, you know, mm-hmm. these haymakers that you're throwing. So it, it perhaps wears you down. But I mean, even if they're just absorbing all those, and even if they're successfully defending it, it's definitely wearing down that person too. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that's exactly what I tell myself. If they don't die, they're going to be hurting. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Absolutely. Like if you can take this all on and you did die, you know, then you're going to be hurt. You yeah. know, that's, that's my yeah. thing. I go out there to try to put them away. And if they, and then if they don't die and they're, they're not going to die, then, you know, maybe I have to survive a little sure, bit. <laughs> sure. But it does seem like you have these guys in survival mode pretty early on in the fight more often than not. I mean, because of that style, because you put them there. I mean, it's a lot harder, in my opinion, to fight reacting and, and in survival mode than it is when you're the guy doing the pressuring. Exactly. I mean, who is the best to say it? Mike Tyson. You right. don't got a plan until you get hit. That's right. You know, and that's what that's the mentality. He, he, I, he I'm not going to say the word hero. He's not like my hero, yeah. but he's someone I look up to in the fight game. And his mentality going in there is like he said, you, everyone's got a plan until they get hit. Mm. And that and that's kind of my game plan going in there. I'm going to come. I'm going to attack early. You know, I'm looking to put them out as fast as you can. Yep. You know, just like if someone broke into my house and they're trying to attack me, I'm not going to move around, move around. I'm going to go straight point. at him. I'm going to go straight at him. I'm going to try to kill him instantly. Yeah. You know, and that, that that's my fighting style. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go in there. I know these people are more trained than someone coming in and attack you at the house. But sure. let's see if you can survive this. That's a great analogy. You know, yeah. so yeah. That, that that's the game plan. I'm not saying that was always my game plan. You know, I've always been that type. Not to say it like growing up, I always liked fighting. That mm-hmm. was just... Something I enjoyed doing. I don't know why it's in, you know, it's in my blood. You know, so I yeah. tell people, like, I've always been a fighter. I fought, you know, I, I played hockey growing up. I always got penalties. I was always the one fighting. I was always the one that would start the stuff. I was always the one they'd come to be like, Gertz, take this guy out. Or fight <laughs> yeah. this guy. This guy did this. Dude, do this. And, and I wasn't, I was never, I'm, I mean, I'm 5'7". I wasn't the big guy out there, you know, but I was always the one ready to freaking fight. And it, oh, yeah. it's kind of just a natural thing, yeah. you know, and... I've tried fighting where I try to point, not point fight, but where I try to be a little more strategic and sure. don't just go forward. And those are fights I lost. Mm. You know, I've looked at them and those are fights because I wasn't fighting my style. Yeah. You know, until I started actually fighting my style, going out there to fight, not make it a pretty thing. I'm going out there to fight. You know, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not a martial artist, but there's there's a little bit difference between a fighter 
and a martial artist. I agree, especially with how they started, in my opinion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, and I, I think that's you spoke to it, but this matchup is, I mean, arguably that you know, you a fighter versus someone that's perhaps a little more traditional in the martial arts as far as how they originated in their career, and and you see it in the styles, and you know, February twenty first, so that's what five six weeks away from now. Um, and he's coming up in weight too, right? He's coming. He I, he's been he was a fifty five. He was like one of those things. He was fifty five, and then I think he was getting thrown around a little bit. So then he's like, I, I'll be better at forty five. Sure. Then went forty five for a little bit, and then he's no, like, well, back. this kind of sucks. Let's go back to fifty five. <laughs> you know, this cutting kind of sucks. So let's go back up. And you've been fifty five your whole career. I fought forty five one time, nice. and I hated it. Yeah, I hated yeah. my. I'm not saying like shit. I'm only five seven. So you're it's, pretty built. It, I mean, yeah, and I can get to forty five, but it. Like I told you, my life sucked. I hated it. Right. I hated it. And did I feel like a genic? Yeah. When I, I remember warming up for that fight and I felt like I was fast. It felt like yeah. everything. But then I also remember building up to that. I hated life. Yeah. You know, and in this sport, like people don't understand like how mental it all is. Right. You know, I've gone into fights, not to say I've always been someone that works hard, this mm-hmm. and that, but I've been in fights where I was in better shape than another fight, you know, mm-hmm. it just happened to be that way because maybe I took it a last minute fight or something. And you know. Exactly. We know how you feel, but I've been in there and I've been in less shape and done better and felt more like I had more, but I was mentally better. Yes. I was mentally at a better stop. Yep. But I've been times that I've been in better shape, but I freaking wasn't mentally good. Yeah. You know, whatever was going on in my life, however it was, you know, I wasn't a mental good. So you're out there, you're not going to do good. Right. People don't understand how mental this sport is. Oh, absolutely. You know, like I'm not, like I, I brought up the analogy, someone breaks into my house, I'm going to fight them. I'm not going to be like, hold on one second, I got to warm up. I yeah. didn't prepare a month for this fight. You know, I'm going to be able to fight. You right. know, like it, you're going to... I ha- oh I haven't trained for a month. I'm not ready to I'm not ready to fight you right Depend now, man. Can myself. you can you come back in a month and then I'll <laughs> I'll be ready to take you on? No, like I, I try to be like no. You gotta be mentally ready for that fight at any moment. Yeah, you know, and yeah. it, it's in your head. It's not you can run a thousand miles. You can do this. You can do that. And yeah, it's gonna help. But it's, if your head isn't in the right spot, it's not gonna do nothing. Right. You know, and a lot of the times people. With all that working out, it puts them in a mental spot where they're like, I'm in shape. Yeah. I can do this. Gives confidence. Gives you confidence. Yep. You know, that's that's half of why you're doing it. I did everything I could to build up to be ready for this fight. Mm-hmm. So now you're confident. So you're mentally good, even if you're physically or whatever, but you're mentally good. You think you're in shape. You, you feel like you're in shape. You're going to do much better than... Someone that's like, oh, I barely trained. I did this. <laughs> that's when it starts to, now that's fucking with you. Even if you could go out there and fight just as good, but you're telling yourself you're not in great shape. Very I didn't do this. I skipped all these practices. My wrestling sucks. If he shoots on me, I ain't going to be ready for it. You know, that that's where you get screwed. But you look like, I mean, you're coming into most of these fights pretty shredded. You look like you put in the work at the very least, whether, I, I mean, whether you have or not, it looks like it in most of these fights. I mean, what is a normal, like, what does a normal weight cut look like for you? Are you running and having to cut a lot of weight or is 55 I, pretty doable? I walk around at about 60, 65-ish. Oh, nice. I mean, that's relatively pretty, pretty, reasonable. Pretty much all the time. Nice. Like, I'm not... I like working out. And yeah, if, yeah. if it's training, boxing, or if it's li- lifting, things like that, like, I enjoy it. So there's never a time in my life where you're not seeing me at the gym. Like, I enjoy that stuff. Like I said, this is a natural thing for me. Mm. I'm not being forced to work out. I don't have to be told to come to practice. I don't have to be told. Like, this is stuff I like to do. Do I hate going to some practices? Sometimes I don't feel like sparring. Sometimes I don't feel like... Absolutely. Like, in the mood. I don't feel like ever running you know like <laughs> but like i tell people there's multiple ways to get i don't run that much sure, sure. you know like i i do some treadmill sprints and things like that but i'm not like a road worker right you know like i do multiple different because there's a million ways to get your cardio absolutely you know so find find what you enjoy you know do yep. it a little bit like that like i have multiple other ways i like to do it and but, i'm sure that's something that's de- developed and evolved over your career too it's a learn. You learn as right. the process goes. If you ain't learning in life, then you, then you ain't doing it right. Yeah. You know, as time goes on, like you you see the veterans or things like that, they've learned a little bit if they're smart. Mm-hmm. You know, they've learned how they adapt, how they do better. You know, and they take a little bit as they they grow on. I don't train the same way I used to train. Not even, sure. not even close. I used to go live four or five days a week. Like yeah. we and I, and some of those sessions were hour, two hours long. I remember being at the gym. We'd be there till ten o'clock at night, you know, and we were going live rolls. And I'd be going with eighty fivers, heavyweight. Like I'd be going with anybody in there. Yeah. You know. Now, I, no, no, no. I don't. I don't. I don't mess around like that. Like yeah. I. I 
I, I try to stay away from the heavies. I try to stay away from those guys. I, I don't remember the last time. I mean, I'm not saying there ain't ever two-hour workouts. Sure. But I don't remember the last time I rolled and freaking went live for two straight hours. Yep. You know, and then I'd be walking out of there hurting, you know. Yeah. When you're young, I call I call it building the foundation. Right. You know, I never missed I never missed any of that. Like I built the calluses, I built I built that found I could like I said, I call it the foundation. I built that. I never freaking I fought on Saturday, I was back in there Monday, you know, like now like I, I, I try to tell people, like, take a week off after a fight. Right. Let your body come back. Let your mind come back. You know, things like that. But it's it's different when you're training. Like, you change. You got to grow. You don't train the same way. Oh, I used to be able to do 500 push-ups straight. And, I, and it's like, well, no, I can't do that. It's like, it's no different. You're just training. Your body changes. Your mind changes. Everything changes. You just got to you gotta do it differently. Yep. Like, there ain't... Don't be trained. If you're training the same way you trained when you first started, you're you're messing up. Right. You know, like probably well, overworking. You're overworking. You're just not doing it right. Like now, I I hit more pads than I ever hit in the beginning. Like I said, most of my training was going live. Yep. I was learning all the things. I'm not saying I know everything now, but, but you I got know enough me. of a foundation. I got enough of foundation, and I know me. Yep. I know me. Not every fight. Somebody's gonna tell me, "Oh, I do this. Do that. oh, I gotta do that to be successful." It's like, do you do you realize he's six two and you know freaking skinny? Like mm-hmm. his body type is completely different. Or he fights like that, you know. Or it's yeah. a whole. We're all different. You gotta learn yourself and what you can do, you know. Yeah. So you get smarter. Like they say, train train smarter, not harder. Yeah. I used to just train my ass off and hard as hell, do everything you could. Oh, you want me to do 500 of that, 500 pounds? Okay, yep, oh, no, whatever, you know. Now my back hurts for <laughs> five, 20 days, you know. Now it's like, no, nah, no, nah, I, don't, I don't do that. That's going to make me feel shitty for the next week. Like, right. I'm not going to do that, you so, know. So then paint me a picture kind of a what, uh, a, so you, again, five, six weeks out. So I assume if you weren't in fight camp before, it's kind of starting to ramp up now. What does a, a normal week of training look like for you? Well, like people say, like the fight camp, like again, I don't I don't really say I'm in fight camp because right. I'm always working out something. If if I don't have a fight scheduled, yeah, I'm doing a little less cardio. Maybe I'm okay. lifting more or, or stuff like that, you know, sure. or, or working different pad. Like my pad sessions are different when I don't have a fight. We're kind of maybe trying some new stuff, you know, but when I'm in like fight camp, we're pretty much working on what we do now. And I'm just trying to sharpen that. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't want you to show me a, a freaking hook kick now and step to the left, throw this. Like, I'm not trying to learn new things. So no new techniques, more I'm refining what you're already good at. More defining what I have and, and, you know, pushing the lungs a little bit and stuff sure. like that. But I'm not trying to, like, confuse myself or make myself feel shitty because I can't get this combo. Yeah. You know, we do that more in the off season, like, where it's more playing with stuff. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm always doing... We're always working. Yeah. We're always working of some sorts. Like this is this is what I do. Right. I feel like I've been a professional fighter for now over a decade. Nice. Like, yeah, this will be a twenty fifth fight if, as a pro. Exactly. And if you wanna if you wanna do this stuff, you gotta take it serious. Yeah, I've yeah. always been someone when I'm doing something, I put I put myself completely in it. Yeah. I'm not messing around. I'm not gonna work out today because I wanna sit here and do this. If you're not doing everything to get your goals, then what the hell are you doing? You know, so I've always been someone working out. It's been my life because mm-hmm. that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. One day it'll be something different. Sure, you know, sure. something else will be w- w- what I'm working doing. I ain't fighting the rest of my life, yeah. you know, so something else. But right now, that's that's the only concern. That's really all I can think of to do, you yeah. know. So a typical day, like I usually have an MMA training of some sort and then a, a strength and conditioning of some sort. Nice. So pretty much two workouts a day, unless I listen to my body now. It's not like people say you got to do it when you don't want to do it. Yeah, some of those workouts, if I if my body feels good. Right. But some days my body will, I'll feel run down. Right. I'll feel, you know, my shoulder hurts today or, right. you know, my back's hurting or something. I don't just go work through it like I once did. Right. You know, right. before it was, and I, it's a wrestling mentality. Work oh, yeah. harder, work through it, work that. And I did do that, you know, but now that I'm older, like I said, train, train smarter, not harder. If I feel like my body needs a break, I'll take a break that day. Yeah. You know, it's like right now, tonight, like tonight will be car- is usually cardio on Thursday nights because okay. I, I train, I do wrestling and pads in the morning and I usually do cardio at night. But tonight, like this week, we've been going hard. We've been going really hard tonight. When I go do cardio, it'll probably be something more light bike sure. or something like that versus, you know, usually do stair stepper or some sprints and things mm-hmm. like that. In a little bit of a lift tonight will probably just be more active recovery. Do you do you schedule a specific day off or do you do it more like you said, just as your body needs it, you'll just take that day off? So Sunday's kind of always been my day off. Okay. Like it's just 
it's just, and that's a tip. It's almost on all athletes. Like Sundays has kind yeah. of been the day off always. But like you said, there will be times during the middle of the week where I'm like, you know, I'm I, I'm a little run down ready these workouts. So I'll take a break on a, you know, Wednesday, a Thursday. Mm. It's like when you need it. And then when Sunday comes, some of those days, I still always try to take a Sunday off okay. even. But I will, some days I'll do an act of recovery in the morning or something like that. I just feel like, Sunday, like I said, it's always been that day, yeah. like where you take and you you got to mentally get away from it a little yeah. bit, not just the physical part. Like you got to mentally get back, walk away from it for a little bit. So then on Monday or whatever your next day, you know, that you're back in, you can put yourself fully back yeah. in. Because so sometimes you get worn out. You oh, know? Yeah, oh, yeah. So are you doing something like active on Sunday? Like, are you going you know, fishing, doing a hobby, or is it more just, I want to relax and stay on the couch all day? Most Sundays are pretty much nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I try, expect, obviously, during the football season, it's absolutely nothing. Like, it's couch all damn day, <laughs> you know? But when that goes off, like, we might do a morning hike or something sure. light, but I try to, I try to, I try to keep it really light. Like, you, especially now, you know, like I said, I've been doing this a decade. You have to take care of your body. I've learned to take yep. care of myself way more than i used to you yeah. know like it's getting massages every week doing this like i got damn near every recovery tool you can think of nowadays like i take care of myself way more than i ever have but i have to you yeah. know you adjust when you i mean if you want to stay in this game for a long time you got to take care of your your body and you've done you a know? good job of that i mean uh, you know you've maintained this career over time it's not like you've got these 25 fights in two years you know you, you've been doing this you have a I saw that you have a win over Drew Dober in your fourth fight. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Fought Melvin Giard back in the day. I mean, yeah, yeah. So back when Melvin Giard was a killer. Oh yeah, that that I think was the last time he made weight. That was the last time. <laughs> that was the last time he and I. That was a bit. That was actually a huge fight for me. That was yeah. kind of my. Um, I want to say coming out party for Bellator. Yeah. Like he, before that, I was more a prelim fighter. Sure. You know, he kind of handpicked me to fight him. Cause it, there, <laughs> and it, like people don't know, like there'll be fighters in scenarios that they kind of get a pick who they right. want to fight. Right. Like, oh, we got these three guys. Who do you want to fight, dude? Yep. You know, and he was at a high level at that, at that moment. He kind of got to, you know, run the pick what he wanted, you know, yeah. run the show in a way, yeah. you know, and he, basically picked me to fight you know and that was one of the things i told him he, i think i said it in the middle of the fight i'm like you fucked up bro i'm like because i remember he was talking shit. he's like i picked you to fight you you know before and i was like all right and after like the few second takedown him and he's sitting down there i remember him making like a noise like fuck yeah. and i'm like you fucked up bro yeah. <laughs> we were talking in his face. oh yeah he's like but you know, that was my coming out party. That yeah. was a main event of fight. And then after that, since then, I think I've, I've either been co-main or main event for, I don't know how many fights I've had since then, eight or eight or 10 yeah. since then. And either, I think I've only been not co-main or main once or twice since then. And this one's co-main too. Yeah, it's a good point to bring up. I forgot to, but this one against Miles Jury is, Miles Jury is going to be a co-main event as well. Exactly. And, and co-main, I mean, it's good, but the bout with the co-main is if something happens to the main, then you're main. Right. And I've had that, ha the side, my side fight, the last one, we were, we started out co-main and then Larkin got hurt. Yeah. But it was kind of funny when we signed up for that fight, we already knew Larkin was kind of hurt they oh, were I just see. hoping he wasn't and then we knew yeah. we'd get bumped up to main event if cool. he was hurt so that's a good one to get bumped up for <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely does it mean anything else i mean is co-main event main event like mean anything and how they treat you or like other than just that you're fighting later uh sort of but you know you want to keep the crowd there and they want they want the stole shoppers at the end you yeah. know a lot of the times when you go to some of these fights you'll see like it's not filled until the end, you know, oh, till yeah. the till the till the last few fights, mm -hmm. you know. So that's kind of what it shows to me, because you know, in this world, people show up late. That's yeah. just how it is, you know. You come there first fight on the main card, it, the place isn't full, but by the time the by the time it's you know co-main or main event, the place is full, right? You know, and it's so it's it kind of tells you something. People people, it, those are more important fights. Yeah, you absolutely. know, absolutely. so. It, 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 like I said, main, I, I said when we got this fight, because I, I was thinking it was going to be a main event, but mm -hmm. I was like, well, main's still in the name, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be. It might as well be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so you said that you cut about 10 pounds. I mean, it's not too drastic. Um, do you do that just the day before, or is that, like, dropping off over a week? Like, what does the actual cut look like? Usually week of, I'm, like, 8-ish. I'm starting nice. to come down, and then last cut, I usually have, like, 3 to 5. Okay. Like, I like to, especially now with the morning weigh-ins which are amazing um 
we we were weighing in at like 9 a.m. Yeah. You know, and um, so you I do love the bulk them. of it the night I'll before. Do, no, I do I do it pretty much. I I'll usually start at like seven seven thirty, oh, okay. and I cut. I like to do saunas, but I cut that weight, and I literally get on the scale, weigh in, and rehydrate. So as short of a period I, as possible. I try to I try to keep my cut, my, that end cut. It's and like people don't know, like especially for cutting weight, that end cut's usually water weight. Mm-hmm. You're usually just cutting water, so you're dehydrating yourself a little right. bit. I like to be dehydrated as least amount of time as possible. That's smart. And especially why I like even like going to places like Thackerville where you're at where you fight. Mm. So I'm able, I literally will work out and walk to the scale, weigh in, and then rehydrate. So I'm nice. dehydrated for five, ten minutes. Wow. And yeah. I freaking, I absolutely love these morning work, you know. The only thing I told people that I don't like is it takes a little bit of my intensity away of weigh-ins. Because when I come to those weigh-ins, when I was cutting weight, because these are fake weigh-ins. These first ones is you walk in, your opponent's not there. You walk, you have 9 to 11 to weigh in. So okay. it's not, it's not or You just walk in, you weigh in. It's not really a thing. You weigh in, and then you come right. back for the... Some you know the fake I call them yeah, fake yeah. weigh ins yeah. you know we're already weighed in for the media yeah in the media weigh ins you know you walk in and you see your opponent but now I'm not as intense I just ate I'm freaking happy <laughs> I kind of liked when right, I would I'm come right. and I come and I'm pissed off right now I'm cutting weight and I see my opponent I'm fucking just, oh. I'm fucking kill you you know <laughs> but now it's more like well, you know, like I'm cool right, we're, we're, right. We're, I'm drinking a water we're not I'm not sitting there because weigh ins is one of those things you're just like and they never. They seem like they're taking forever yep, every time you're there. In. And then when you're later on the card, you're last to weigh in or oh, you're last geez. to weigh in. So and you're like, God, you want it to be the other way around. You're like, aren't we the more important ones? <laughs> yeah, like, let right. us weigh in first. So you're just walking through this cattle line for freaking, you know, 20, 30 minutes, you know, cutting weight, your your weight cut, and you just freaking want to drink something and you're standing there next to your opponent. Cause if you've ever seen it, like one opponent goes, the next right. one goes, you're standing next to him. I like, in a way, I like that intensity because I, I like to get, like I said, I'm I'm fighting out there. I'm a right, fighter. Right. I like to hate my opponent. Yeah. I, I like to. And if I don't hate him, I'll build up something in my head somehow. Yeah, you're you always know? hate him for the night. I'll, I'll build up something, you know, he's trying to take everything you want, yeah, this, yeah. that, you know, you got to build something. But if I actually don't like you, Ray, I love that. Right. I love that. Like, if you're a dick or you're, you know, talking I love that. Yeah, you, you know, like the intensity of the fight. I like the intensity. To me, oh, yeah. I look at this as a fight. And some people be like, don't get too intense, you know, like that's not good. You fight with aggression. Da, da, da. I fight with aggression. Yeah, right. It's your that style is, anyway. That is how I fight. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if you want to piss me off, great. Like, I love that. I want to want to kill you more. Yep. You know, like yep. I want those fights. So talk as much shit as you want because that, right. that helps me. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, you mentioned that you do it. You're doing two days essentially strength and conditioning, and then skills based training like pads and wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you generally do that with? I'm my coach, Jake Ramos. Cool. So at Genesis. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. At Genesis, he's the new head coach there uh, since it tra- transitioned to Trend, Genesis. Yep, yep, yep. He's the he's the new head coach at Genesis. From you know, it's formerly Grudge. That's when yeah. I when I moved out here. Shit, I've been out here like six or seven years. When I came, I came out to Grudge because of Pat Barry and Rose. Yeah. They were my good friends from Minnesota. I trained uh, with them in Minnesota, okay. so that was kind of he kind of you know he knew I was kind of looking for a new gym. I was either gonna move to California, maybe Alliance, hmm. or or uh, come out here. And he's like, dude, you need to check this out. And that's when I came out. He was was here. They were here like a year prior to that. Okay. So that's when I came to uh, to Grudge and fell in love with just being in. It wasn't the gym is great and everything. The, I love the people. Like I said, that's when I get met Gaethje and then I pat. We had a good group and you know I love them. I love Trevor. I love Jake. Like it was a great. But it was just being in Colorado. I freaking yeah. just loved yeah, being awesome. out here. Oh, I yeah. mean, I'm someone that has to have like both the balance in life. Like you got in. I'm not saying I'm out every weekend hiking or doing stuff, but you know like. This is just a beautiful place. Yeah, and the availability know? of it if you want it. Exactly, yep. exactly. The mountains, just everything. And then let's top it off with the elevation. It's yeah, like right. I tell people, I'm like, I get free free 10%. Free ten percent cardio, just <laughs> living here. Seriously. Like I, I, that's what I always tell people. I'm like, it's ten, it's free ten percent just to live here. Yep. You know why you think all the Olympic training centers are here? Yeah. Something yeah. for some freaking oh, reason. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, they know what they're doing. Exactly. So you're getting your pads in with Jake. Do, does he do the wrestling with you as well? Um, I more do my wrestling. Um, not like again, I don't like to be like I know everything in this sure. like that, but like again, my style now, 
I mean, I've been in this for a decade. I know my style. And you were an all-American wrestler, I, I, just to I be wrestled, clear, in college. <laughs> exactly. I wrestled my, yeah, I'm not saying my whole life. I didn't start wrestling until 10th grade. But that, wow. But through college yeah. and all that, that's all I focused on. It was yeah. Everything was about wrestling. Life was That's impressive, by the way. Wrestling. I wrestled in high school, and that's, a, that's impressive to be able to start in 10th grade and be a all-American in college. Yeah, it was it was fun. They, they were always trying to get me to wrestle because like I was always like I said I was always aggressive. So the <laughs> wrestling coach I always was trying and I wasn't into it. He's eyeing you in the hallway. I wasn't into it, and <laughs> yeah. it just happened to be in tenth grade. The Fayette teacher was the wrestling coach, and you got to choose. I remember it was like three things, and it was like you gotta you you know you gotta choose what you did. It was wrestling, and then I think there was like badminton, and then there was like something else. And yeah. I wanted to do badminton. And I was like, I'm gonna be in the, I'm gonna do the badminton. And he's like, No, 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 you're doing wrestling. You're doing wrestling. And they've already been trying to get me to do it. And I was like, Fine. And then I did it. And that coach was his name is Bob Detmer. He was the coach and um, my high school coach. And he was just awesome. And then I started to like the guys. And then all of a sudden became like, Oh, okay, I'll give this a try. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I was quitting hockey at that. I played hockey my whole life. I loved it. But I got in a spot where I, I just wasn't into it as much anymore. And I thought I was all of a sudden going to be a snowmobiler. Mm-hmm. I was big into snowmobiling. Damn. I'm like, I'm going to quit hockey because hockey, when I get into something, that's all I do. Hockey was, you know, regular, was spring, fall hockey. It makes ho- sense like, in Minnesota about those things. Hockey, hockey, it's the hockey state, Minnesota. Right. You know, yeah, that's, absolutely. The, that's the big Mighty thing. Mighty Ducks. It's everything out yeah. there. I mean, it's the 10,000 lakes. People are playing hockey outside, making their own hockey rinks. Like, oh, you hockey's... just put that together for me, the fact that everyone's playing hockey on lakes <laughs> and they have so many lakes. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it just kind of happened, and I, I, I sort of I fell in love with it right away. All of a yeah. sudden, from 10th grade, and now I'm doing wrestling all year round, you yeah. know, and I just had a good group of guys that I, I jived with, and that's that the camaraderie of wrestling is what's the biggest thing. Oh, yeah. You meet. It's like I... I it kind of like it's like army and stuff like you see yes. all those guys are so close well that's kind of how wrestling you know you got is. through a turmoil time a time of turmoil together and it exactly makes that bond even closer. It makes that bond and i know like all sports kind of do that a sure. little bit but wrestling is a little unique because you go out there by yourself but then you have the teammates to come back to and you, you also suffer together. you also suffering cutting weight yeah. like and cutting weight isn't as bad as it once was. Like people are a lot, you know, not Smarter saying about stupid it. about it, but we, but in a way we were, it. yeah. And you <laughs> cut weight, and and now they make you like. I know there's all these new rules. I don't even know them all, but you gotta be ten percent away from this, right. that. You can only lose this much in a week. Like yep. then they didn't have it. I mean, we had guys cutting a, you know, freaking one oh five from you know this. So that and, had just started when I started wrestling, but. If you weren't, you know, state champion or the number two guy, they weren't checking. It, it, exactly. <laughs> and in college, they kind of had it, but we cheated on all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I remember sitting there and we had the testing guy and we're doing the testing and they're supposed to watch you pee and you're supposed right. to hydration test. And I just remember we had like a new, because the years before that, the guy would just let us do whatever. And then we had a new guy and he was watching me pee. And I just remember looking at him. I'm like, are you gay? What are you <laughs> looking at? And then he, and they're like... You know, I'll turn around and then I then I freaking pour the water in it and I'm like, here you go. Well, I mean, yeah. it is a really uncomfortable having someone watching you pee anyway. Uh, I don't know that I'd be able to be. Wrestlers are weird though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wrestler, come on, you were a high school wrestler. Wrestlers, wrestlers are weird. Yeah. There's some stuff yes, that that you know most people would frown upon. Like yes. wrestlers are some weird it's a good dudes. Way to put it. Man. Wrestlers <laughs> are some weird dudes. And and like I said, I didn't start till tenth grade, so it was like a culture shock for me when oh, I yeah. started because these guys are already weird. And you're dealing yeah. with them, but like that's the bond because there's no, there's no boundaries. Yeah. That I want to put it that way with yeah. wrestlers and their teammates. You don't have boundaries. You're getting smacked in the ass. You're getting this, and you're not, you're not looking at like, oh, you know, it's not yeah. like you just, it's just get, starts to be normal. Yeah. And I just remember like tenth grade, and I was, like I said, I was a hockey player. We weren't that weird. <laughs> and then you get with these wrestlers, and you're like. Man, you guys are weird. <laughs> like, well, they're in a singlet all the time. They got to uh, shower together. You're showering because you got to shower. Most yeah. sports don't really shower after because, no. but you're but wrestling with you know ringworm and stuff. But you're touching yeah. a, you're getting another man's like sweat on you and stuff yeah. like that. Other sports it smells. Yeah, yeah. It's just you. You got to be go more to cleansy. <laughs> you got to be more cleansy. You know, yeah, like yeah. you're you're sweating a lot more than a normal sport. You're also touching. It's another man's sweat on you. Yep. Like yeah, let me get a shower after. Yeah, yeah. You know, most sports they'll play and they'll go home. They'll shower there or, yeah. or whatever. It's not as big, but wrestling's like mandatory that you shower after. Oh, yeah. Well, with that weird shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. 
<laughs> um, okay, so so grappling, you kind of dictate your own pace as far as the grappling is concerned. Jake, what, on the pads, um, what about uh, strength and performance? You mentioned that was a big part of the day too. Uh, we go to Lando's. I go oh, to cool. I go to Lando's performance for that. I go there a couple days a week, nice. um, which is great. I again, I've been doing this for a long time. I kind of feel like I know my body in a way, but I love going there because it's kind. It reminds me of like weightlifting with the wrestling team. Well, it does seem like people that are even very in in shape like Drew Dober, like all these guys at the high level, they are still going to land as they trust them. Exactly. We trust them. They know what they're doing. And then you get that, you know, you get that group workout together and I get to have that with them mm. and you get to push that pace with people, you know, versus like a lot of times I'll go work out on my own, which I like to do. I right. like to work out. And like I said, I know my body more than anybody. Right. I just do. Yeah. And I've, I've been per- perfecting it. I know what works. I know, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. I've worked with a lot of head strength and conditioning coaches through college wrestling through even after oh, right. you know I've, I've worked with some high level people so I, i've taken stuff from all of them so it's not that i don't think i know what I, I i know how to do stuff but when you go somewhere with a group of people and you have a coach telling you 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 perform a little higher because you, you may, maybe on myself i would have done four rounds but right. here i did five right. here i did six i would have i would have been like oh no i'm t- i'm good on that was a good workout at four but then they make you do that next one yep. you know and that's where that little extra is just yeah. that little extra effort and you have you have other people around it's not about yourself you want to yep. not say impress them but you want to you, I know you, what you mean, yeah. you're there to work you know like i'm not i'm not gonna look i'm very competitive I'm right not, right I'm that's not, more what it is yeah. you know i'm very competitive i'm not gonna take it easy on it like, i'm trying to push it because you're pushing it and yep. we're gonna we we elevate each other absolutely you know people so, to hold you accountable people yeah. to hold you accountable so yeah. i like going there i'll do a few like i said I, I pretty much do strength and conditioning five days a week and i go there for two of mine and wednesdays are like that's a day like everybody gets pushed to the limit like, is everybody doing the same it. thing not exactly okay. they, they they structure it towards everybody where they are in a fight camp or even just their 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 type like you know Corey sanhagen does like he he's doing some strength the guy's already got cardio up the butt well you know, i did wonder if he's like lifting weights you know alongside and, you and drew dober when you guys are a little thicker and, it, it, exactly know. drew dober is doing freaking cardio at you don't need lick because the guy's so solid already <laughs> you know so they 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 change it up for every athlete that's sure. why they're so good and I, I i feel like they they really know what they're doing there yeah you yeah. know, so and like I said, like with a Corey, the guy, the guy's just we're some of us are just built differently and built with car. That guy could probably not do anything. He could run freaking a marathon. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he's got that type of lung capacity. So strength is what he work. You know, works on more. I need more cardio. Drew mm-hmm. needs more. You know, like the guy's thick. He's got to keep his weight down. You right, know, right. so they and they structure it like that. And that's what I really like. And like I said, it just. It brings a lot of the top level people together. Oh yeah, you that's know, true. You, and you're all pushing each other. It's great to see all the other top level fighters. And you're all yeah. working together. That energy in the room is great. You know, so yeah, because even Factor X goes there. So yeah, you're everybody, really getting everybody. In everybody, Colorado. everybody, all the top level fighters go there. Yeah, no, right. no joke. And it's and it's the atmosphere. It's the everything about it. You yeah. Know? Well, and you mentioned that you're able to get cardio in other ways as well. You know, whether it be pad rounds. I mean, what do you prefer? Like, what is your preferred cardio style? training for cardio for 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 cardio is a little different i switch it up a lot like sometimes some camps i'll be hitting the pool more you know i I think pool workouts are extremely good sometimes i'll be hitting stair i i really like doing stairs that's wrestling right exactly we did the (laughs) dome and we did the stadium all the time that's by far my favorite uh i used to do that a lot but i moved a little bit away from where i would go Uh and now it's a lot farther than like it was five minutes from me so Mm -hmm. i would go there three, four days a week. That was my thing. But now I haven't been going there because it's a little far. I'm not, I'm not a driver. I don't like driving too far. So especially Colorado. traffic. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So it gets switched up, but you also got to keep it fresh. I know, like I said, you gotta, you gotta learn yourself for sure, but you got in this sport, if you want to keep doing it for a long, you gotta keep it fresh. I can't hate everything I do. And you gotta switch it around a little bit. There's a lot of ways to get from A to B. Mm -hmm. There's not one way of cardio. You know, like it's about up here. It's about being mentally, you know, but there's, like I said, swimming, sprints, you know, I've been using, I just started using this. I don't even know what kind of machine. It's like an elliptical, like a stair stepper thing. I don't even know what this machine is, but I started (laughs) using it the last like month or two and I've, I've liked it a lot, you know, and I, I feel like I get a great workout on it. I get out sweating, you know, I can get my breathing heavy and stuff like that. I don't even know what this machine is. I've never even, I don't know if it's new or I just never looked at it. 
But honestly, switching up the workouts consistently is probably helping your cardio, if anything, you know, as long as you, you, you know when you're pushing your cardio. So exactly. if you can get it in these different avenues, I mean, it's only going to be beneficial. Yeah, I think you got to switch this stuff up. Like yeah. I said, I've learned a lot of different things. I've worked, I've done, you know, what do they call strongman workouts, like where I'm lifting boulders up and pushing those, those things up. I've done that type of stuff. I've done CrossFit, you know, I've done all these, I've done every time of damn near, every type of workout there possibly is yeah. you know maybe one that i haven't done yet is mason work which i will be doing soon <laughs> cool. but that's one i haven't tried but but you just learn what kind of works for you you know and as working out this long and it's going to be a lifetime thing for me i may yeah. it's a it's a thing but you gotta switch it up i can't just yep. go to the gym and do flies every day every week every do squats every day do tons of squats do that it's like that that's going to get boring real yeah. quick you yeah. got to switch it up. And I, it's a lifestyle for me. I'm never going to not work out. I'm going to be 50 and be sick. I'm going to be working out because I, I love it and I like being in shape. You know, it's not about look. I like feeling good. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I agree. It, yeah, you that's know, my goal. <laughs> exactly. You know, and there's, but there's a million ways from going from A to B. Why do it? I don't barely ever run on a treadmill unless it sprints. Why would I do that? Because mm -hmm. I hate it. There's a lot of other way. That's not the only way to get your lung capacity or to get cardio, you know. Yeah. But you hear someone, I hate running. On, when someone tells you, oh, cardio, I hate running. On, do you think cardio is only a treadmill? Right, like, right. like, if you hate it, yeah, there's a, there's a million other. Like I said, I just found a machine that's probably been here forever, but I never touched it. And there, and I see a ton of those different weird machines, you know. You don't know if you like it or not, if you haven't tried it. Like, yeah. you know, there's so many ways to get from A to B. You and you know? said the same thing about recovery that, like, uh, you you've found a bunch of different ways to recover over your career. What, what are you currently using? Um, well, main one obviously is massages. Like I never I really, it. never really, it wasn't all about just like a feel good. Like I never really thought about like how it releases a lot of stuff in your body and just, you don't need a massage every time where you just, where something hurts. Like, mm -hmm. don't just go in like, oh, my back, I got going for a massage. It's not that. Like, they, they it loosens up stuff, you know? Like, there's a lot of stuff behind it, you know? It's yeah. not about just, oh, my back hurts, let me go get a massage. And that's how I used to do it. Like, oh, this hurts, so let's, I gotta go in and get it fixed. No, like, right. I continuously do it, try to do it once a week for the most oh, part, yeah. unless something, you know, with my schedule or something doesn't happen, but I try to do it once, maybe even twice a week. You, just loosens up, you know? Do you go to like a, like an elements massage or is it more like sports specific? Uh, it, I go to a place called a New Spirit, okay. which is, uh, it's more of like a, these people are more of a, it's it, it's not like what's envy massage where people, like every time I, and I never book the same, I just call and see what's available and I take that person and every time I go there it's someone that actually wants to heal your body right. you know not like let me get through this 60 minute massage yep. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through my routine I felt that, that before and I hate those I've been yeah. doing massage envy we all have yeah. and not to say there ain't a great massa masseuse at massage envy sure. yeah there probably is there's probably a few there's probably multiple <laughs> good ones there but you don't know but they're just going most of them are just going through a freaking uh, a, a string of things they yep. normally do yep. you know and then and the, the new spirit that I go to, they had mo I've had multiple people, and every time you feel like this person's actually trying to heal you, you cool. know, and they're going, they're they're working through your body. Oh, are you tight here? You're like, yeah, you know, and like I always like to go to a massage. And I tell them, you know, maybe this is sore or this, but I like them to kind of flush out the whole body. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so I tell people like massages are big. Like if you can get them, like, maybe you can't afford, it, get your girl and give you a massage or yeah. it's something like like they're they're it's huge to loosen up stuff, you oh, know. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'd never really tasted it till Thailand, and then I was like, "Wow, my eyes are open." This exactly, is amazing. exactly. Get the ones that freaking throw their elbows yeah, in that's you, what I'm saying. walk Stand on your on back, you. <laughs> like stuff like that. Like it, it, it's releasing a lot of stuff. You know, it's like people wonder, like, I'm getting a massage, and then your nose is starting to run, or like stuff. It's like it's releasing stuff. That's what like, you know. You it's get good. build up exactly. <laughs> so that's one of my big ones. I mean, I can tell you, I do a lot. I, I have uh, what they call recovery boots. They're just compression boots. Yeah, yeah. I've seen this like one of my favorite over. things because they're so similar you put them on i usually now this helps me with my my playing video games because i can i can <laughs> i can say like i'm recovering that's right you know that's like right. so i've made a thing like if i'm playing video games i'm in the boots okay. you know that's so probably a good uh, good method to have Exactly, because they the the recovery boots. If, they, if someone doesn't know what they are, all they do is air compression, and they mm -hmm. literally just compress the crap out of your legs, and then they release, and it brings blood flow to the legs. Mm -hmm. Which I I bring them in the fight week. I when I'm in fight camp, I do them every single day. And the idea is that helps the recovery because blood's going there. To... Blood flow to help the recovery, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like flushing out the legs, right. you know, bringing new blood, making the blood move, and blood you know. Heals. 
Exactly, yeah. in Blood huh. Heels. Cool. So that, I got to say, is one of my favorite, one of my favorite ones. It's pretty simple. You just sit down and they freaking just, you know, compress yeah. them. And you can get that type of, the ones I got are like $250. Mm-hmm. And tch, well so. worth it. Yeah. It's like, I just remember thinking like back in my old days when I never bought anything there. Oh, I can't afford that. It's like, are you joking? This is your, this is how you make money. Like spend a little bit on yeah, it. Invest in your invest recovery. Invest in yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like it's going to help you in the long run. It's, it's going to extend years on my career for one, oh, yeah. you know, taking care of yourself like this. It's going to extend years. So AK more money yep. to pay for that. $250 at the end of the day. What the hell are you wasting that on? Yeah. You know, like invest in yourself a little bit. And I've seen a lot more athletes do that. And you're hearing more people. I just read a, o, OJB was talking about it. Like mm-hmm. he, he said he would read something about, he's like, I could spend money on a car, but then I didn't pay it, put money into myself, you know? Right. And it was like, people are learning, like take care of yourself a little bit more. It's going to, it's beneficial, especially yeah. when you're, when your uh, body is your job. Do you mess like, around with that? Um, absolutely. I, I got a, a hyperbolt. Okay. One of my favorite things they're now. They're trending now. There's a bunch yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're not, it's not just a, a gimmick. Like that no, it thing looks is, like a massage type it's like thing, a massage. Right? It's like a deep tissue massage. Yeah. I literally use it before practice almost every yeah. time. I just go through my whole body with it. Like 10 minutes, I just hit every, and it's like, it's like, Firing everything up. I always tell people, I'm like, this is ha- this is this is 50 percent of my warm up. Like, I'm like, this, this is I've I've cut down my warm up a little bit by just using this gun because it feels like it's loosening everything up. Again, it's another thing that creates blood flow. Right. Just like a deep tissue massage or things like that. Or you got a knot. Like, that's another one of my favorite tools right yeah. now. You know, and there's a I few things like knots. it. They have that one is the number one, but they also have like a I have a um. A roller but it vibrates that's that thing's pretty nice but once i got the gun i stopped kind of using it does sort of the same thing cool. in a way so i mean there's those i got heat pad i got like a i got like shoulder heat pads and back pads uh, i i use my back heat pad all the time because yeah. it's one of those things you bring heat to something again blood flow you know it's all mostly all these Loosens tools and things are about blood flow yeah. blood flow heal blood heals yeah. you know that's what it's about it's bringing blood flow a lot of the heat stuff and vibrate is bringing blood flow yeah you know, it's loosening stuff up fascia whatever and bringing blood flow it's like cupping cupping's another thing i do i got my own cup thing that's, you know like that's another thing if you use that it brings blood you flow just to get the your area. girlfriend to do it or something yeah and then plus the one i have has this little like string on it. you damn near do it yourself oh, unless wow. it's like in the middle of yeah, my yeah, back or thing like then. that or i mean i just had there i i went to therapy i go to therapy twice a week nice. just for my body it's more like kind of like it's my body place yeah. you know you did cupping on my shoulder you know loosened it up oh, that like, nice. it's big you gotta do all these extra things and this cup i like i said i can do most of the cup thing and the cup thing cost me i think 35 dollars huh and no joke, like it's got this little string. You can damn near do it to yourself, and I'll do that. I'll do that to myself. I'll, I got a little kink somewhere. That's where I when I use the cup. Like I feel okay. like I have a kink, and I'll use that somewhere. And <laughs> I haven't messed around with that yet. That that that's a good one because, like I said, it's like thirty five dollars. Right, right. And you're like, you think people, you know, oh, you got cup, you know, it's so like crazy. It's like no, dude, this thing is thirty five dollars. Did to myself. Like yeah. it's not like the old Chinese cupping where they're lighting glass ones on your back and they're on fire like sure. that that's maybe that's a little better i don't know but these ones seem to be doing something well for me yeah yeah like i said every time i have a little kink i do it and i'm like feel good well like you said you've been able to find these things over your career so you know what works well for your body at this point exactly and that's a small investment like i said right, 35 dollars right. for the system and it, and it helps yeah you know most chiropractors a lot of people are using this cupping oh, yeah. and you can go out and get one for 35 dollars. like don't tell me you can't do these extra i can't right. afford it it's like 35 dollars. like did you have you gone to a movie this week you can get a fucking cupping system yeah it's not a, i have the same one my therapist has like it, it ain't you know mm-hmm. it ain't a lot so yeah. I, I try i try to tell you know the youngsters coming up and things like that. When you're young, you don't have to do as many things. Sure. We know when we're eight, like we heal fast. Shit, you, those are days you could drink and then work out the next oh, day. Yeah. You know, it's whatever. It's different times. Yeah. You know, again, you get older, you transform a little bit. You learn some different things. You learn how to take care of your. You have to take care of yourself better. Well, and I'm it sure ain't the same. You I'm know? sure your diet and nutrition's evolved over time too. Um, do you? I mean, is your diet different inside of camping out? I mean, you mentioned you walk around with six five. You're working out regularly. I assume assume just because like you said you like to feel good you're probably eating relatively yeah well. and i eat almost the same not to no joke when i'm in camp i eat more 
Sure. Uh, uh, when I'm, more I'm calories. Not, I've never been a big big foodie guy. Like, huh. do I like to go out for a good dinner or something? Absolutely. Like, we all like to do that and get some a nice steak or whatever. But I've never been one to just be chowing down. Sure. When I'm not in camp, sometimes I'll I'll all of a sudden I'll be like, oh, it's five o'clock. I haven't ate. You know, and that's not smart. That's not how you like stay in shape. But when I'm in training camp. I make sure I come home at the lunch. I make sure I'm getting like my nutrition, so it's just my more calories. Of I, I just eat more, which sure. is like a different what you hear from people. Like they might eat less or cleaner. It's like I'm eating the same stuff. I just make sure I get my lunch in. I make sure after a hard training session, I get that nutrition in. You, know? you want the energy. Exactly. I need yeah. the energy for the next workout. So what does a what does a normal meal look like then? Um, I eat a lot of meat. Yeah. I'm a big meat guy. I don't eat a lot of vegetables. I like again. I try to put a little more vegetables in when I'm in training sure. camp and stuff like that. Yeah. But chicken potatoes, like that's the type of. I'm always been chicken potatoes, steak and potatoes, yeah. stuff like that. My girl makes me. I mean, I tell people this and they think it's funny, but growing up, like even through college wrestling and stuff, I ate chicken fingers almost freaking. That was all I ate. Yeah. Like I put chicken fingers in the in the freaking pizza oven thing. That's what I ate. Like be, like chicken fingers. And then I when I it. wanted to be more healthy, I put chicken fingers on a salad. <laughs> like that. That was that was all I ate. And when I tell you, like I'm not even joking. Like all I ate. Well, at least you know, what you, you know what it does to your body, you know, especially in wrestling. You don't want to, like, mess around and potentially miss weight. Just, That's all I ate, you know. And, and, you 13 know, chicken fingers a exactly day. Exactly. And, and as the time got, I'm getting older, you got to be smarter. So now I've gone to real chicken. It ain't just, <laughs> sure. chi- it ain't just chicken strips. Out, you know, I barely eat chicken. I'm not saying I don't eat them. I still eat some chicken strips. Some but Chick-fil-A. Exactly, exactly. But I, I've kind of substituted just chicken fingers for real chicken. <laughs> chicken <laughs> breasts. Yeah. So. But I get a little variety more now with my girl. She makes different things, you know. But right. my variety before was basically chicken. That's, that's about it. <laughs> protein and lean. That's beautiful. Exactly. Um, so then just to understand your journey, I mean, you kind of painted a good picture of it. But did you do anything other than like martial arts wise before wrestling? Or was sophomore year of high school kind of the first time you started really doing things towards MMA orientation? Yeah, absolutely. That was that was the first time I've ever really wrestling, you know, 10th grade. Before that, it was pretty much just hockey. I did every hockey, football, baseball. I just... I always was in sports. That was yeah. kind of my my thing. I I, I love sports. I love. I, I'm very competitive. Like yeah. anybody know. Some people hate me for my. Some of my friends, like I said, Gaethje hates me for my competitiveness because we'll just be doing something and I win. I'm a di- like I'm competitive in everything I do. We're out doing something. I'm in it to win it. Yeah. Like in yeah. anything I freaking. We're paying paper rock scissors. I'm getting jacked about it. Like <laughs> that's it. I'm here to win. I don't. I'm not about. I'm not about losing in anything. So I, I'm trying in everything. And they can be a little overbearing at times, and I know it, but I'm intense when it comes to anything <laughs> competitive. So growing up, it was sport after sport after sport because I love the competitiveness, yep. you know? So so then you started wrestling in 10th grade. When when does fighting come into the picture as something that you might actually pursue? I, after college wrestling, um, when I, because like I said, I didn't red shirt in wrestling, so I, uh, I was done and I was senior year, and there wasn't really... Shit, I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah. I was chilling, hanging out. I had a, such a small. It was my fit. It was fifth year. I had such a small class schedule that it was like it was so breezy. Yep. And I had a couple friends that wrestled earlier that were fighting, and they're like, "Dude, you should try it." And, you know, and I was like, "Hell yeah!" Like, well, you know, like what else am I gonna do? You know, like at that time, like wrestling, like after college is. Right. really freaking hard and yeah. you gotta be for the olymp all you're training for is olympics that's all yeah. there is there's so not it, much glory there ain't much glory there ain't gold, there ain't no <laughs> money you yeah, know yeah. like there ain't no money in it like the, most of those people are barely scraping by you know so it was kind of, it was never really in my thought not no. to say i was a good wrestler but i wasn't i wasn't the the most elite i was never to where it would make it worth it to even pursue exactly that thing. you yeah. know and it, i wasn't that type you sure. know so yeah. After and then, like I said, some of my friends were doing it. I came in, I started practicing, and I know I fell in love. I mean, it was a what, what do you want to call it? Um, Mankato had like a, a club, mm-hmm. uh, an MMA club sport, so mm-hmm. it wasn't even like a real like, so it was free and went, and it was like it was more like 
I'm not saying there was some coaches there, but it wasn't like a coach coach. You know, right. it was other students that were kind of doing it. And they yep. were like, you know, I, it was a club. Yep. And then I would bring some of my wrestler buddies in, you know, and they would come in and practice with me and, you know, stuff like that. And it, it turned into something pretty quick because yep. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. You know, I'm going with other people. I've been training for a while. And I'm right. doing good. You know, I never, I never even had any amateur fights. I went. Straight. Oh, I was gonna ask you that. So no amateur career. No, Damn. no amateur career. Damn. It was kind of me. It was like I was like, let's make some money. You well, know? And you're starting at 22, 21. I mean, yeah, I get it. 22, 23, even maybe. Yeah. So, so I think I was like 22 when I started. And wrestling, you get the experience of being in front of people. You've, you know, you, you had that competitive. It's one on one. You did it. Right. Not to say I was just talking to my buddy Banks the other night about it. I was like, I wish I would have maybe took one or two. I had no striking. I had nothing. Sure. You know, I would. I'm like, all I did for those first few fights, I went down there. I went out there. I took the guy down. And I and I submitted him or ground and pounded him. You know, like that's it. I I don't even. Th- I remember when I, even when I fought Drew it was like my fourth fight. I don't know, wonder if I fucking threw a punch. So uh, you started in Bellator, I mean, essentially around the same time that some people are just leaving their amateur career, you know, nine fights then or so. Exactly, exactly. I, I didn't have much experience in the punching and stuff like that. Like I said, I'd go out there, I'd take them down, and then, you know, i just use my aggressiveness and instincts, you know. Yeah. I had no striking, you know, I, and I feel like I barely had any striking until I came here. You know, it was nothing I really worked on much. You know, I mean, we did, but my my head coach, Dave Manet, which great coach, everything like that. He was yeah. a ground guy. You know, he wasn't, you know, he was no high level striker. His he name's was, familiar. Um, he he was the first middleweight UFC champion. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, but but back when you know, damn near, he he was the one that was fighting in you know basements and stuff. It was when fighting was like that. You know, there was no he was bare knuckle fight when it was bare knuckle yeah. and that was the norm. You know, so he was very old school. Yeah, you know, and, right? More, yeah, more fighting orientation than technical striking. Yeah, and his so, so. and then what he was was a ground guy, and he mm-hmm. was like I always wish he would have took his stuff way farther because. Like, I watched him for 10 years, or not 10 years, but multiple years. No one ever tapped this man out. Like, he was, when I got good, it was not being able to get tapped out by him. (laughs) You know, that's when I was, when I was getting good, I could flow and not get tapped out. Yeah, that was great. (laughs) Other than that, you watch him tap everybody out. You know, it was, like, insane. But that's, that's where I really built a base. Like, that's, that was my base. Like, not saying I don't train jujitsu now, or I especially train wrestling. I don't train it as much because when I first started for those five years, that was pretty much what I trained. Mm-hmm. That's all I trained, you know. And I still, it's it's riding a bike to me now. Right. You know, when I right. get on the mat, or I, my flow is all there, you know. And again, there there might be a couple of handles. Like I talked, my girl's a jujitsu girl. Like there'll be some handles I miss now because sure. I'm not. It's like anything. You gotta sharpen. You gotta keep it. And I don't have those. I'm not sharpening it as much. I don't right. have, but when I get there, I, I still know pretty much what to do. You're you comfortable know? there. Main, I'm very comfortable. If someone brings part. me, tries to bring me there, I bring them there. I'm That's comfortable, right. but it's just not my style anymore. You know, like my style is to go out there. And if I take you down, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pound you out. I'm not trying to yep. tap you out. I, I take someone down. I'm trying to inflict damage. At all I, times in a fight, I'm trying to inflict damage and if you get taken down your goal is to stand back up get back up yep. you know i'm not looking for a, a triangle choke i'm not looking to do anything like that i'm just looking to explode back up and get up i don't feel like anybody can hold me down yeah. you know so that's just became my style i've worked everything i've been working on is to work towards my style right you know right. yeah one and that's smart one time someone's gonna come out there you know if they can inflict their style good for them you know, if, if I go out there and fight Miles Jury and he's able to inflict his point fighting style sure. and I sit on the outside, it's going to be a good night for him, yeah. you know, but that's that's not what that's not what I'm looking to do. <laughs> that's not what I'm looking to do. So what uh, what made you come to Colorado then or what prompted it? Um, like I said, my my, my buddy Pat and, and Rose were out here and he basically he loved it out here. You know, yeah. we, we trained in Minnesota together for a couple of years and they moved out here. And it was pretty much he was like he knew I was kind of looking to go somewhere else. Minnesota wasn't just. My train where I train wasn't good. It was more or less I just didn't want to be in Minnesota anymore. Uh, yeah, the cold weather, freaking Minnesota is so cold in the winter. And at the I've same heard. time, like I tell people, like Minnesota is about hunting and fishing. I don't do neither. Yeah. I don't like neither. I never hunt an animal. Like that's it's that's that's what it is. Like yeah. you, if you're into that, great. Like you got ten thousand lakes to fish on. You got this. I never fish. I never hunt. So why the hell am I here for this cold? <laughs> so I, I I was pretty much I, I I'm upset I was depressed living there like yeah. winter time is like you literally go from your house to your car to where you're going 
and, and it's freezing as fuck. Like, and that's winters. Yeah. And it's like, if you, and I never ice, I didn't go ice fishing until like five years ago. My whole life, like, I'm like, I'm not ice fishing. When'd you move out here? Huh? When'd you move out here? I've been out here damn near seven years now. Okay. okay. So I've been out, I've been out six or seven years. I came out here when he told me to come out here. And I lived with my buddy Tony Sims for a little bit. Yeah. And I, I was living with him. And then um, I had a fight in Bellator. That was my first fight I lost. And I went back home for a little bit. And it was kind of like, I was like, oh, like I didn't want to be back there, mm-hmm. you know, but it was kind of one of those things that got to come back here, you know, coming up and fighting stuff, you know, yeah. like you, there ain't a lot of money in it at yes, first, yeah, you know, so it was kind of one of those things where I went back for a little bit and I'm like, nah, like I got to be back there. So I came, I only went back for maybe like four or five months and made a little bit of money and then came back and nice. then never left again, yeah. you know, so a big investment in your career again. Exactly. Like I, again, like I said, it's mental and mm-hmm. being out here was making me much more happy yeah. than being back in Minnesota. Yeah. You know, not like I said, wasn't all about, I'm not gonna be like, well, the training facilities were 10 times better here. Yeah, they're good. Like, and I love my coach right. and I love that shit for sure. And I had, I had a great gym at the Academy there too. Greg Nelson is an amazing coach. And my, my friend, like I said, Pat and Rose are even going back there for a few weeks just to train with him. He's Greg a great Nelson. coach. Yeah, yeah. He's a, the, the guy is freaking ma- master splinter. Well, the knowledge. One. Oh, yeah. I don't think he sleeps at night. One. <laughs> I don't think he sleeps at night. The dude is mat- m- he's splinter for sure. You know, like you meet this guy. He knows every, he could tell you any combat of move from you're like, Quan blah, blah. I don't even know what that is. And he's like a black belt in it. You're like, <laughs> what in the world? You know, like that is the most knowledgeable man in MMA I've ever huh. met in my life. And like I said, I don't think he sleeps. I think he just reads books and he trains and he's, he'll be in his own house hitting a freaking thing. And you're like, this guy. Dude, you know, so the training there was great. It was just my life outside the training right. I wasn't and happy it's important. about. It's, it's important. It's important. You have to have that balance. Right. Like, again, like, I put myself completely in MMA. Yeah, absolutely. And I am. But you also got to have a, you got to be happy outside of it. Yeah. You know, I, like I said, when I went to, I, I fought 45 once. I freaking hated life. Did I feel like I was in great cardio? Hell yeah. I had to run every single day. <laughs> yeah. I was running three miles a day because I had to, to keep my weight off. Right. I, there was no other choice but to run. The cardio which, was a necessary byproduct. And it was good. I yeah. had great cardio, yeah, absolutely. But in my head, I was mentally hated life. I was eating nothing, you know, like I had to be on a very strict diet. Nowadays, maybe I could get a nutritionist and it might not be as hard as that was, sure. you know, but that was coming up on a no budget life, yep. you know, and that was also coming up when I had to be a bouncer at a bar at night, you know, like, so, so there was a lot of hard things going on at that time. And, you know? and so it's fighting full time for you now. You, you're able to do that. Yeah, ever since I moved out here, it's really? been full time. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, I wish I could stay. Some, I've had, I've had a, the unfortunate injuries. Sure. Like I tell people I've lived out here how many years, and I've been injured damn near every year, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a crazy thing. Before coming out here, I never had really any major injuries. Sure. Since I've been here, I mean, to name a few, you know, I've had some I had ACL surgery. I had the shoulder surgery, the bicep surgery. <laughs> I've had like, two ACL surgeries. Yeah. It's like, it's been a lot, yeah. you know. Um, but it's also, you know, you're fighting at the highest level. If I'm at the highest level, I'm, I've always been someone to be able to budget well. I'm not done with my money. Nice. So money's much better than it was. I'm yeah. not saying I'm happy with what I made. Sure, it's sure. better. We always think we should get more. Of course. You know, like that's how it is. But being able to, you know, survive off of it now. Yeah. So. It's good, like I say, every year. This is my year to not get injured, That's so right. Right. <laughs> I get a little strain, and then and then it's uh, you know, it's no good for for the rest of the fifty fivers. Yeah, That's you right. know, I get a I get focus on getting better versus on getting my body better. Right, <laughs> right. Cool. So, um, can you think back? Do you remember what your goal was when you first started fighting? Was it just to fight, or like what was the goal? It was funny. We just like again, me and my bu- my buddy Banks, which fights. He fights tomorrow night. That's right, LFA Banks, eighty. Yeah, UFC yeah. Fight Pass. Exactly, Check it out. Exactly, exactly. He fights tomorrow. He's a, he's a savage. But uh, we were just talking about that the other night because I was never one. I never even had the thought in my head like, oh, I'm gonna fight to be the best. I'm gonna be the best. I'm I'm gonna fight. I want that belt. I'm gonna be a world champion. Like. <laughs> That was never my process, and there's mm-hmm. the good for everyone's different. And like, absolutely, people should have that. My, you know, Grant Neal, my buddy Grant Neal, he's right. he, his goal is to be the best in fighting, yeah. absolutely, and he and he's gonna be the best as you know, he's gonna be amazing, yeah. you know, and that's great. 
I was just always a fighter. I looked yeah. at it. I'm like, I want to go out there. I want to beat the shit out of people. Yeah. I want to prove that I'm a that I'm a bad motherfucker. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that was it. Like I already know that. Let's show some people. You know, right. I'm gonna go in there. I'm just gonna fight. Like it was all just about fighting, make money. Oh, I can make money. I used to fight for free. You know, and yep. I'm not glorifying that. I'm not saying anything, but I loved fighting, and I got in fights just to fight. And I did it for free. And then now you're telling me I can get paid to do it? Hey. Like, that was all that. I was like, okay. So. I was like, sign me up, you know? And then it got more serious. It became, you know, a profession. I was really trying. But I don't, yeah, I want the belt because I want to I wanna show I'm, I'm, I'm good at the sport. But it's never been about that ever. It's never been about... I want to show them the bet. I just want to show that I go out there and I fight every time. So, yeah. so that's still the goal. Yeah, I mean, still the goal. Do yes. I want to fight for the belt? Absolutely. You yeah. know, there, there's accolades that come with it, and there's money that comes with that's it. Right. I'm a prize fighter. That's right. I'm about making money in this. I'm not. If you told me that you can do this and I'm gonna do it for free and you can fight for a belt, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm, <laughs> you know, I, I'm doing this to make a living. You know, to for for the next stage of my life. You know, I'm trying to set up my next stage in my life now. You know, I'm using fighting to even do that. You know, you meet people, this, right. that. You get, you know, you get a little notoriety being a fighter, you know, so you meet people. I'm setting up for the next stage, yep. you know, and I'm just using what God gave me, you know, and d doing my natural ability. And like yep. I said, I, I always fought from being 10 years old to, I mean, I never got to go on field trips. Like, I was that kid. Not to, again, I'm not glorifying that, but sure, that was sure. just me. Like, yeah. I, I enjoyed fighting. Well, it shows a new style. You're a banger. You know, you come forward. There's no that, backing up. It, it, and what's funny is, at first, even in my fight career, I, I was okay at that, but I, I wasn't able to, like, be like, dude, you're a fight. Like, fight. Like, yeah. I liked it, but half the time I'd go out there, all of a sudden I would be... I would be more strategizing. Oh, God, don't get hit, you know, do this. And then until I was able to be like, dude, you love fighting. Just, fight. Just go out there and fight. Mm. And then whatever happens, happens. Mm. Don't be worried about losing or not. It wasn't even about losing. I was never worried about losing. It was it was about not performing to my best ability. Yes. It was always a fear in my head. Yep. But then you don't do it. And then you're like, you're trying to be so perfect that you're not, that you're, you're fucking it up. Like, and that was me a little bit in the beginning of my career. Like, I was just trying to be perfect like because i wanted to be perfect out there and it's like once i was able to just and like i said gaethje was which is crazy that's why i got shit not just for what he does but i was like i love that man for how he was able to get through to me to do that you right. know like that was that was not a lot of people can get through to me I'm right not that's that a big type. part of it just the ability to let it click exactly yeah. exactly and then once I, I that was able to click it was him and like i'm saying him and pat barry were the best ones to ever get that out of me to be like dude you enjoy fighting go out there and just like you used to when you were doing it for free like go out there and just fight well, those are whatever happens too. exactly exactly yeah. and they were huge you know pat he's he's like big brother to me you know and yeah. I, I i won't even say about anybody else in the world like that yeah. is a guy that i look as like a big brother and he was because he was the first one at, in minnesota to to get that through my head just fucking throw bro like he was the one he would see me you know whatever and he was the one to be like dude just just throw yep. you know like don't don't overthink don't do this whip it you know and yeah, that's yeah. where it was finally like okay like he was one of the first to really get through to me on that you know so that's why like i said those two have been big influences yeah. on my life and be able to go out there and sometimes it might not go your way okay you know but it's not gonna you either go out there and give it your all and not go your way or go out there and be be a be a turd and not go your way right which have one regret. have regret yeah. that's the word and i've yeah. had those fights where i went out there and i wasn't in a good spot i went out there did it and i lost because i didn't i didn't give it my all i didn't yep. do anything well and I've also had those fights where I went out there, I gave him my all, and I lost. And that, yeah, you're still disappointed, but you're able to get over that one a lot yes. faster. You yep. went out there and think all your way. Right. Fighting, no one's going to ever come out of it undefeated. Someone's got to lose. Yeah. Someone's going to lose. How many undefeated fighters are there in this world forever that they stay undefeated their whole career? Right. <laughs> Somebody, GSP lost. Look at his style. Yeah, he was yeah. he, he even nullified how other people would fight, and he still lost a lucky KO punch. It, yeah. it happens. Freaking happens. But yeah. if you don't go out there and do what you do, you're not going to win. Yeah. If I go out there and try to be a, like I said, I go out there against Miles and I try to point fight with him, I will lose that fight. Right. There ain't, I ain't going to win that way. I got to go out there and fight how I fight. And that's 
fighting, <laughs> you oh, know? Yeah. I'm going to make it dirty, you know? I'm going to go out there. I'm going to throw stuff that he's like, that's not how people throw this punch, <laughs> you know? And that's, you know, people look at it and they watch my tape and they're like, oh, I, I'll do this to him, you know? And then you go out there and you're like, well, okay, that's a little different than I thought. Like, that's yep. not, you know, like, go it's out. It's a little and, harder to implement. <laughs> it's a little harder to implement when you got someone in your face, that's you right. know? That's right. Um, so then if you had to give a tip to a young fighter, someone coming up, I mean, what would that be? You know, it's the the biggest thing, especially the young fighters, is remember this, this, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You know, in the beginning of when I was a fighter, like, something would happen, you know, I broke my thumb, I remember, early in my career because I didn't know how to punch. I was punching wide. I didn't yeah. know how to punch. I broke my thumb. Well, I was back in there a month later trying to do shit. Broke it again. You know, I broke it three times in a row until I was finally like, all right, dude, take a break. Like, this two months to recover is going to save you yeah. years or whatever. Like, you keep breaking, you got to stop. So what I tell people, like, remember, this is a merit. If you're actually doing this, like, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You don't, yeah. you get a cut on your eye. Don't be back here tomorrow and reopen it again. Let that thing heal. Yep. You got, you got this or that. Like, remember, this is a long process. You, you have a fight that falls out and you're not getting, the, I want to really fight this. I was going to fight. You know, it's like, I tell Grant, Grant's that type. Like, he's like, I got to fight. And then it falls through. And now he's, he's got a little work, you know, at mm-hmm. first we get worked up and it's mm-hmm. like, dude, it's okay. One month difference ain't going to change your trajectory. Yep. Don't now have to like force it or beat yourself up over right. it. Like this is a long sport. Yeah. You, you're going to have multiple fights fall through. You're going to have multiple, you're going to get injured. Things are going to happen. Like don't, don't, don't harp on it. Yeah. Remember this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Don't put yourself back in there right away. And I was like that. I was hurt back in right away. Oh, bleh, back in right away. Like, like, and I didn't give myself time to recover or a fight would go out and I would be so pissed off. And then I'd take the next available fight that was right. not a smart fight. Right. Like you're just like, yeah, give me this fight. Oh yeah. I'll fight that guy at 180. Yeah. Like I want to fight. Like that was me. I was yeah. an idiot. I fought most of my fights were at once in my beginning. I was fighting big people because I couldn't get fights right away. And I'm like, I don't care. I'll take this one yeah. i'll take that like yo last yeah you know like be a little smarter about it especially you know like yeah fight like you're a fighter a fight comes up you're supposed to fight like fight yeah but be smarter it's yeah. this is a marathon don't don't be like i gotta get back in there tomorrow like it you've got a lot of time in this fighting i'm on my 11th year yeah. you know like 25th fight 11th dude, year it, 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 it's a marathon and yeah. if you treat it like that you, you you'll stay in it i've had a lot of people blow themselves out right away and they're out and they were studs they were some of the people i started with or whatever were great mm-hmm. but they 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 didn't get their satisfaction instantly so then they were like oh i gotta get out of it it's like dude you're a stud like if you could have you could have got over that rocky part like you'd be here you know and you like this shit but you had one roadblock and it was the end of the world because you expected yourself to be here now it's like it's not a sprint like just remember that and that that's why i feel like i've learned that over years and why i can why i'm still fighting yeah. you know and like you got i've had like i said injuries i was able to get through them not look at them like oh this is my end of my career now you know like a lot of people some of these injuries i've had would have been the end of their career and i've seen people be the end because they they haven't made it yet and then they hurt their knee so they're they haven't made it yet they got to go do this and then they're like i've had multiple i've had i I have a few people in mind like they were undefeated and they retired after they were undefeated but they had one little obstacle that didn't go their way or something happened and it, it, it changed and it's like, dude, you got to remember there's a lot to this. This is a long journey. This isn't a short thing. Yeah. So that's why I try to explain to like some of the younger guys coming up, like it's long. Yeah. It's long. Don't have to get in there right away. Don't get frustrated when something doesn't go your way. You know, like this is a long thing. A loss isn't the end of the world. Like right. remember that like some of these guys, like especially when you're undefeated, like you have a vision in your head, you're never going to lose. Yeah. Like. I get it, and I want you to have that mentality. You should think you're never going to lose, absolutely, but life throws crazy things at you, yeah. you know? So, so I, I always try to say, it, the, the spiking game is a marathon. It's a, it's a long journey. Like, don't, it's not in and out, yeah. you know? So, yeah. things it. don't go your way. It's not a sprint, man. Like, you can come back, and it's going to be, you're going to be great, you yeah. know? I love it. Hey, you're a wealth of knowledge, wealth of experience. I appreciate you coming. So, uh, next fight, February 21st, uh, Bellator, Thackerville, Oklahoma. How can people follow you online? Oh, just check me out at Brandon Gertz MMA. I'm on either Twitter, MM, or on Instagram, Facebook, 
same thing keep cool. it simple cool give them a follow and uh, subscribe to our youtube channel prize fighting business and brandon thank you so much man yeah, that was absolutely, awesome brother thank you absolutely